Over the last few months, I've been asked several times about how to add a column in Power Query for the fiscal month, the fiscal quarter, or the fiscal year. And each time I get asked, I can never remember exactly how I did it last time. So I thought, why not just record a video and then it's there for everyone to see. I know I don't have to rack my brains remembering how I did it last time. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here in Power Query, you can see the data that we're working with throughout this video. It is a column of dates that have already been formatted as a date data type. Now, because I'm based in the UK, these dates are in a day, month, year format. If you're based in the US or Canada or somewhere else, you might have a different date format, but everything we'll look at will still apply. I'm also assuming for this video that our year end will be at the end of March. So that's the end of our fiscal year and that also we're working with a standard calendar. So a month end is the end of the calendar month. We're not thinking about non-standard calendars in this video. So let's make a start by adding a fiscal month column. There are several ways that we can add a fiscal month column into our Power Query dataset, but we're just going to look at one of them. And I think this is the easiest to apply. So we're in Power Query, have my date column selected, we go to add column and select custom column. Okay, the dialog box pops up. Let's call this fiscal month. And then the formula that we want to apply. So we use if. Now we need to get the month from our date. So for that we use date.month. And then we want our date column. So if the date.month of our date is less than or equal to three, and it's three because we are assuming that March is our fiscal year end. Then, so in that scenario, we want to get the date dot month of our date, and we want to add nine. And that's because there's 12 months in a year, so 12 minus three, three being our year end, gives us nine. So if you're dealing with a different year end, your number won't be nine, but it is in this example. Else, we want the date dot month of the date minus three. So we'll click OK on that. Fantastic, we now have a fiscal month column. So you can see the 21st of April would be in month one of our fiscal year. And the 25th of March would be the 12th month in our fiscal year. Now you'll notice that this has come across as an any data type. We can change this into a whole number data type by adding an additional argument onto the end. So I want int 64 type, and that will turn this into a whole number. So that's a useful way to save a few steps. Okay, so hopefully that was simple enough. Now let's move on and see how we can add a fiscal year column. Okay, so now let's add a fiscal year column. This is very similar to our fiscal month. We'll go to add column and select custom column. I'm going to call this fiscal year. And then the formula that we want in here is if date.month. And in there we want our date column again. So if that is less than or equal to three, then we want the date.year from our date column. Else we want the date.year of our date column plus one. I'll click OK on that. So we now have our fiscal year and you can see up to March 2022 is in fiscal year 2022. But as soon as we get to June 2022, we're then in the fiscal year 2023. So that fiscal year column is working. Let's do the same thing with the data type. We'll add that extra argument. So int 64 type, that gives us a whole number. Perfect, that is our fiscal year column. Now for both of these, the fiscal month and the fiscal year, if we already had a calendar month or calendar year in our data set, we could just reference that rather than using the date.month or date.year functions. So if you've got calendar month or calendar year, you can refer to them instead and that would be more efficient. Okay, now let's move on and see how we can add a fiscal quarter. Okay, so now let's add our fiscal quarter column. Now initially, this might seem a little trickier. Have we got to use a whole load of nested ifs and logic? 
The good news is, no we don't. I'm gonna show you a really super simple method. We'll come up to add column, custom column again. And let's call this fiscal quarter. Now the formula for this is going to be number dot round up. So that's number dot round up. It's a capital R and a capital U on round up. I'll open the bracket on that. And then I'll select my fiscal month. And I'm just going to divide that by three and close that bracket. So if our fiscal month is one, that calculates as 0 0.33, that gets rounded up to one. If our fiscal month is number two, that's calculated to 0 0.66, which gets rounded up to one. And also if our fiscal month is three, that calculates to one, which rounds up to one. So therefore, this is a great way of calculating our fiscal quarters. And again, let's apply that same data type method in here. Fantastic, so now months 10, 11, and 12, you can see they are in quarter four, period three is in quarter one, period six is in quarter two, and all of our other quarters calculate correctly. Well, that's it. Hopefully that is three simple methods as to how we can add fiscal month, fiscal year, and fiscal quarter. Nothing too tricky in there, but it's worth referencing this so you can use it in the future. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.